chimes on the clock. Uh, they work from over there. The clock comes up on that rod into the gearbox, over to this gearbox, and then out to the four faces. So that's your clock. And the mechanism is all down on the lower level, uh, where we, where the console is. Uh, that's the low C bell, the low bell on this carillon. The lowest bell is always called the Burton, Burton bell. And then they tell you how much it weighs, and the other ones are smaller than that. So that's, what is it worth? You can see, uh, you know, here's the carillon, the metal part in there. But here's the way it works. See, the wires come from down on the console, down on the keyboard. When you play it, you pull a lever down. The lever then comes up through these wires. Um, take this one, for example. It's going to pull that down. So that's a rod all by itself, kind of an angle iron here. It rotates here. As you pull this down, Okay, so this comes across, over to here. So this is the rod then, and the wire from this bell. So when that's turned, this gets pulled back, and the, pulls the clapper over against the bell. The hammers that you just saw strike on the outside, that's the clock. The clock hits with hammers on the outside. Oh, yes. And the player, the carol honor, um, plays with the clappers in here, and then the spring shoots it back. So you end up, um, you know, if you get it down and let go, or throw the key down actually, then the, the bell comes over, or the clapper comes over, hits the bell, and bounces right back. So it doesn't tend to be deadened at all. And a bell is an interesting thing. You kind of give it a tap there, and you'll hear the bell. Well, that's kind of like what the clock is doing. Hammer there, but it hits there. Sometimes you can hear some of the harmonics. Can you hear anything? Well, actually, if the hammer hits hard enough. Wow. You've got three notes that you'll probably make out, especially when you're outside in the park listening to somebody play. videographer for our church. Oh, really? Yeah. Here's one you can reach fairly well. Yeah. Um, I can't answer that. I really don't know. They cast them too large, and then they put them on the lathe, and they tune each harmonic so that it's perfect. Hmm. Uh, so they grind it down on the lathe. So really with this section from here to here? Yeah. Well, we have to quit playing at 8 o'clock. So yes. come on down and we can have a chance to play it. You'll, you'll hear the works banging away up there, but there won't be any bells interfering with your notes. Mm. And then this just comes back. So 
So is that electrical motor? motor the yeah, it's got electrical on? motors. It goes out of whack if the uh, if the power shuts off and somebody has to come in and adjust the clock. And here's the man who's coming tomorrow. He's really a very very pleasant fellow. Well, it runs on steam as well. I honestly don't know. But here's the old player piano type idea, only it's mm -hmm. making electrical contacts there. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. June 1953. Mm -hmm. Leroy Brunton and his brother Ross, they're in the guest book. You guys have to sign the guest book. Oh, okay. <laughs> Uh, because it tends to, you know, like if you played 
those two notes at the same time, for example. Uh, you've got this note trying to ring a minor third, which is a B flat. At the same time as, like, that's a G, but it's going to sound a B flat as it's harmonic. Mm -hmm. Because it's a minor third up, and if you play the B, which is a major third, then across the park, that's going to sound like a clash. So you, you kind of have to be careful. So anyway, I was thinking, well, let's see if I.